Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm gonna to tell you all about manufactured home pricing and affordability. Manufactured homes can be a more affordable housing solution at every level of the housing spectrum, from under 100,000 to over a million dollars. There are models designed and built to be some of the most affordable homes available. Then there are models designed and built to be more affordable than its site-built counterpart. I recently posted a video about a luxury prefab home provider and because of a misstep in my delivery, the pitchforks came out and I got absolutely lambasted in the comments about affordability or lack thereof. After licking my wounds, I realized this is the perfect time to look at the different levels of affordability because believe it or not, not every manufactured home provider is trying to be the most affordable option. What I'm gonna do is show you the different levels of affordability, give you examples of each, then tell you which is my favorite of all, so let's do it. The most affordable manufactured home is the entry level single wide from a high output company. These homes can be purchased for under $100,000. When I say high output company, I'm talking about the big dogs, the Cavcos, Champions, and Claytons of the world. These folks are building thousands of homes per year, have massive buying power, and are building in factories designed to put out big numbers. If you haven't been in a high output factory, they're built for speed. The factory line is usually split into stations where when the home is in that station, a specific part of the home is built. For example, station one is likely the frame, then there will be a separate station for things like walls, drywall, cabinets, siding, and on and on until a full home emerges from the other end of the factory. Each station has dedicated people that continuously build that specific portion of the manufactured home. So through repetition, they become specialized in that task, which increases efficiency. The stations are set up so the frame starts at one end and moves through the factory in a direct line, stopping at each station where every item needed to build that portion of the home is there ready to be used. The high output factories are able to build more homes faster, which enables them to be able to sell their homes at an affordable price. It would be great if we knew those three high output companies were going to have the most affordable prices. However, each company offers different tiers of homes. Under the umbrella of the big three, each has multiple brands that offer different products with different standard features and of course, come at different price points. For example, Cavco alone has Cavco, Fleetwood, Palm Harbor, Nationwide, Homes, Fairmont Homes, Cherry Eagle, Destiny Homes, and now Commodore Homes. They're all Cavco, but they're branded different for different markets with different standard features at different prices. To make things just a bit more confusing, some brands offer multiple different lines from the same factory. Like how Toyota has the Corolla, but they have the Corolla LE, SE, L, and so on. They're pretty much the same with slight differences and again, different price points. For example, the factory I deal with has five different lines of single wides and actually have two identical floor plans from different lines and there's a 10% difference in the base price for the exact same floor plan. Lots to think about, right? Clear as mud. The pros of the high output factory are they're the most affordable, they're usually the quickest, keep in mind 2021 is an absolute gong show, and they're a well-oiled machine, so you know what you're getting. This is where I operate. I like to buy the most affordable line of single wide because I think affordability is a huge issue right now. If you're buying from a quality factory, the most affordable line does not mean it's an inferior product. It just means it has less standard features or options. The downside of a high output operation is the homes are more cookie cutter. If you're looking for something totally custom, one of a kind with a ton of available upgrades, you might have to move to a medium output operation. Next in line on the affordability scale is the medium output factory. These are factories that operate similar to a high volume factory, just on a smaller scale. The concept is the same, but they're usually an independent company building out of a smaller space. The home doesn't flow through the factory stations as uniformly, which opens up opportunity for customization because there isn't as much stress to keep the factory line moving. A perfect example of a factory in this category is one near me called Chaparral. It states right on their website, we're proud to be small enough to know our customers' names and yet have the experience, equipment, and flexibility to custom design and build the kind of modular homes Canada trusts for their superior construction, nearly endless design possibilities, and the friendly people who bring wish lists to life along the way. See what I mean? 
these factories are very open to customization and are a great option for people who want something specific or unique because they offer more flexibility to bring your own design ideas to life. Here's an example of a very unique home chaparral built. It's a small single wide with a cool roof and very intricate details on the exterior that simply would not be possible in a high output factory. It's hard to see for sure how well the home is finished in pictures, but it does look like they've taken this place to another level. The pros of buying from this type of factory is the added input you get in design. If you have a unique property or a difficult lot that needs something special, these are a great option. The downside is the increased price. These factories typically aren't as efficient, which leads to higher costs, so there is a bit of give and take. Finally, we have the high-end luxury factories, and it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out that these are the least affordable option. These factories are almost more like big workshops than factories. It's still a more efficient and affordable process than a site-built home, but affordability certainly isn't the main concern. These are some of the coolest homes available, and the customization is almost endless as long as the home can be shipped. In my opinion, the goal of these builders is to be a more affordable high-end home, not compete to be the most affordable home, period, if that makes sense. Examples of this type of builder would be Connect Homes or East Coast Modern. They're building a very high-end product for a certain buyer who isn't concerned about paying a higher price. A common buyer of this type of luxury home is someone who lives in a remote area where it's either impossible or extremely expensive to build a home on site because of travel time and access to building materials. They want a high-end home and these are more affordable option even at $349,000 for the Mod 1 from East Coast Modern. Again, these companies aren't trying to be the most affordable option available so the price tag shouldn't be the main focus. They attract customers in other ways with other benefits. This is a newer segment in the manufactured home industry and I think it's one in the right markets has a lot of room to grow. Manufactured homes are a great housing solution at every level of the housing market. They're an amazing option for people looking for something affordable, which right now, given the current conditions, is a lot of people. However, there are benefits for people all the way up to the luxury market. Building indoors makes sense. It's why the industry is expanding to offer more than what people are used to seeing. There are modular hotels, modular apartment buildings, and high-end homes with high price tags. I think we're going to see new companies entering each segment of the factory-built space because there are housing shortages all across the board and factory built homes are one solution to that problem. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.